start, let's start with the merchant silicon uh, trend. Uh, as you, you're probably aware of, the throughput of the single chip uh, switching chips has roughly doubled every other year. Uh, this has been going on since uh, the very first switch chips that came out in 2008 and uh, has been a trend ever since. The 2019 chip is Tomahawk 1 at 12.8 terabit throughput. The 2021 chip is Tomahawk 4, which uh, we can see next year at 25.6. And Tomahawk 5 is expected to show up in 2023 at 51.2 uh, terabits. Now, uh, let me then just jump into the topic of what's beyond 400 gig. And uh, obviously, it's Ethernet gig. And uh, there's two separate topics here. There's the optics and there's the 800 gig Ethernet Mac. Now, the 800 gig Ethernet Mac spec was actually completed uh, April this year by the Ethernet Technology Alliance. This is a group of companies that includes WordCom and uh, Microsoft and Arista and Cisco. It's an industry group that has also shepherded previously the 25 gig Ethernet that uh, was not available from the IEEE. And uh, the chip designs that will incorporate in 100 gig are actually in progress. So there was no time to wait for the IEEE to write the spec because the IEEE usually takes four years to complete a spec. Um, now, we expect to have um, switches that have 800 gig ports, where they look like 800 gig ports starting uh, next year. Those are ports that have um, eight, um, I'm sorry, uh, the, the optics will be right next year. The switches with 800 gig Mac will be uh, will ex be expected to be ready in 2023. Um, and the 800 gig optics, however, driven by the eight lane uh, optical portable phone factor, uh, will are expected to be shipping in the market uh, a year from now uh, with uh, supporting a dual 400 gig configuration initially. So, um, as you're well aware, there's, you know, SFPs, QSFPs, which started with 40 gig originally, then it's 100 gig. There will be a version of uh, 400 gig, uh, QSFP with four lanes with 100 gig service coming up. And then there is the eight lane optics, which initially is the 400 gig OSFP or QSFP DD, eight lanes by 50. And the next version will be 800 gig or eight lanes by 100. So all of these roadmaps are, are well defined and are essentially is what the industry is going to build towards. Uh, to give you an idea what a future Tomahawk 5 51.2 switch could look like with 64 Ethernet gig port. Obviously, this is an artist's conception. This is not a product announcement, but it, it looks like it will fit into a two year box with, you know, 32 ports on top and 32 on the bottom, belly to belly. Um, again, this supports either 64 Ethernet gig or 128 port gig or 5 1200 gig ports. It's an enormous amount of capacity. Uh, and there's no co-packaged co optics uh, required for this type of system. Uh, now, why uh, is there this excitement around identity optics? And the reason is very simple, uh, cost. Uh, so the expectation is that the identity gig optics will be about a third uh, cheaper per bit than using two 400 gig first generation optics. And that's because uh, there's only one chip inside instead of two separate gearboxes. And it's you know one card cage and one slot and one connector and so on. Now on top of it, the system cost is lower as well because you have uh, you can build denser chassis, meaning they're smaller. You need fewer PC boards, fewer connectors. Uh, but best of all, all these future 800 gig optics that have 100 gig lambda are fully compatible with the first generation 100 gig lambda optics, including the 400 gig FR4, the 400 gig DR4, and so on. <coughs> Now, um, this is a slide uh, that came from Intel, where they're talking about the uh, cost per bit in silicon photonics. And on the right version of the slide, you can see four lanes and eight lanes. And yes, it is cheaper to simply have a bigger silicon photonics chip that has eight lanes instead of four lanes. In fact, the curve continues to 16 and 32, but the, the slope of the curve is not as steep anymore. The biggest improvement is from four to eight. So going back to uh, the, the whole history of SERDIS speeds, um, the, the first generation data center switches 10 years ago, 10 gigabit SERDIS, starting in 2015, the industry converged to 25 gigabit SERDIS speed. So the 100 gig interface all along was 4 by 25. Um, the most recent batch of chips, including Tomahawk 3 and Cheshire 2, 50 gig SERDIS, 
which doesn't match too well for the old Honegate 4x25, but you can use, use a reverse gearbox to get the 50 gig, 250 gigs back down to 4x25, or and or use a forward gearbox to convert the 850s to 4x100. But with 100 gig service, that again, the chips will start shipping next calendar year. A uh, 100 gigabit is just one channel, a 400 gig is four channels, and 800 gig will be eight channels. And the current expectations are that 100 gig service will start ramping in 21. This is shown in the dark blue color on top. This is measured in terms of bandwidth delivered. But by 2022, at least the expectation is that the bandwidth delivered through 100 gig service will exceed, will be the, the majority of the market and will actually exceed the entire 2020 Ethan market. So it's a lot of bits coming over these high-speed service in, in the very near future. This is the same kind of data as the waterfall charts. Obviously, 10 gig is still shipping. 25 gig will still ship for many, many more years. 50 gig will still keep shipping for many more years. But as the 100 gig kicks in next year and starts ranking, it will be the majority of the volume. And all of these charts are by bandwidth, not by, by units. So as Merchant Silicon has transitioned to the 100 gig further speed, uh, they, it's clear that they work best with 100 gig lambda optics because any other type of optics like 25 gig lambda or 50 gig lambda would require a gearbox, an inverse gearbox, which adds significant cost and power. And looking at the market forecast here, over the next 10 years from 2021 through 2030, at least the forecast is that there will be 1 billion 100 gig service channel shipping in the industry, which is a very, very, very large number. So the installed base of both 100 gig service and 100 gig lambda optics will be tremendous. So um, what this enables is 800 gig optics in OSFP and DD form factor, 400 gig optics in the QSFP using four lanes of 100 gig, which is a form factor completely compatible with the legacy QSFP optics. And then the 100 gig SFP, which would be a, you know, the thing that used to be 10 or 25 gigs, speed up to 100 gig in the same small form factor. So jumping right in of the kind of optics that people are working on, and these are not necessarily shipping yet, but this is what we expect to see by the end of next year in, in production. Uh, 100 gig ER1, uh, which should go easily 40 kilometer, uh, duplex fiber, um, 100 gig LR1, 10 kilometer, 100 gig DR1, which is the, you know, the, the two kilometer spec. It, essentially, these are all similar. The ER1 has a, a more sensitive receiver and more output power. And then there also will be SR1 which is key for enterprise uh, customers who have a lot of multi-mode fiber. And this will go over a du single, meaning a du standard conventional duplex multi-mode fiber, at least 50 meter reach. The IT release spec actually calls for 100 meter reach over OM4. But let's just say 50 to 100 meters in an enterprise environment, which is what the installed base of fiber is. Um, again, all of these should be in production by the end of next year. And there also may be a 100 gig DR module for the people who want to do 100 gig DR over even longer reach. On the 400 gig side, uh, already in production is the 400 gig FO4 and DR4, uh, which are ramping and are uh, being used in initial 400 gig deployment. The 400 gig LR4 spec is complete. Uh, there's actually two versions of this spec. The 100 gig Lambda MSA spec goes 10 kilometer. The IEEE spec of the same thing goes 6 kilometers. Don't ask me why there's two different specs. But they basically go 10 kilometer unless you have really bad fiber. And there's a proposal to define an ER4 spec. So the, the proposal exists, the product isn't out yet, but we would expect to see this next year, which will go either 30 or perhaps 40 kilometer with uh, four channels of uh, ER4 land grid. And uh, there also will be a 400 gig SR4, which is you know the same as 400 gig. And then going to the 800 gig optics, which are initially dual 400 gig, but eventually will be native 800 gig. There's 800 gig FR8, LR8, Dual 400 gig FR4 and so on. And again, the chief attraction here, lower cost per bit. So, um, one key issue is, in fact, forward and backward compatibility with the installed base of optics. There's tens of millions of optics in the field now that are either 25 gig lambda or maybe even, uh, the older speed. Um, one thing that people missed on the initial 400 gig optics were there were single speed, meaning locked into the 400 gig speed. The new versions, which we call multi-speed 400 gig optics, will support downgrading to 200 gig or 100 gig field for operation, meaning that you can configure in software the port speed from 400 to 100 gig, and it will actually talk to the existing 100 gig field of optics on the other side. Um, the same will happen on the across form factors. The first generation 100 gig DR modules will be QSFP, 
uh, the future ones will be SFP, and they obviously can talk to each other optically, even with the two different form factors. And the Hornet Geek uh, Gear 4, of course, you can split out with four miniature duplex connectors to four individual Hornet Geek SFP. Uh, we're also working on a design for dual LC connector for uh, dual Hornet Geek FR4. Uh, it turns out on the OSFP, there's just enough room for a dual LC connector, and this is good news for people who have millions and millions of these LC patch cords. So there's a variety of breakout options that allow people to connect the future optics to the past ones. Early discussion on 200 gig service, uh, primarily focused on the future 800 gig, 4 by 200 gig optics. Uh, you would expect to see those in the market perhaps in 2024. Uh, those will be cheaper than the 8 by 100 gig optics at that time, but Again, the adoption of this is really tied to Ethernet Geek Ethernet, which will be just be starting to ramp at that time. So I would expect Hornet Geek to remain with the Hornet Geek Lambda optics for you know a long, long time and be the bulk of the market. Uh, just a few words on Hornet Geek TR. Uh, we had the first modules talking to each other back in January from one vendor. Uh, it took another six months to get multiple vendors to talk to each other, but they're all talking to each other now. So it's expected that these modules will be available to customers, early samples, end of the year, and production volumes next calendar year. There are three types of these modules. VR, which is the uh, industry or EF standard for the 80 kilometer to 120 kilometer DCI use case. There's a gray optics version called, I guess we call it VR minus, which has uh, application code two, competes with the future point of gig ER4, but it's not amplified point to point. And finally, there will be a TR plus, which will extend the reach to perhaps 600 kilometers or maybe even longer. To, uh, with multi vendor support to drive the longer haul. And the status of that is that TR is about ready to go into production, that TR minus is coming, that TR plus will need more validation. So we're currently telling people they should expect the second half of next year. Uh, we have announced and are shipping an, a, pl uh, a plug and play optical line system in the size of an OSFP plug. So the entire um, amplification and muxing, colorless mux is included in this little thing that allows you to connect two switches with up to eight colors to each other and EOS software will configure this and you don't have to have a PhD in optics to uh, to connect it. Uh, and people are already working on 800 gig tier optics. The spec isn't out yet, but the goal is to get to double the speed at lower cost per bit and so on. Uh, so this is all good news and I think I'm actually at the end of my slides. Any questions? Andy, first question. Where can I get one of those passive optical line systems for home? I'm a little limited on the bandwidth from well, here back to the latest pop. <laughs> Probably don't need it at the home, meaning uh, <laughs> even the 400 gig gray optics or EF4 is an incredible amount of bandwidth for a typical enterprise customer or an you know, entire building of things. Um, but what is also true is you use up the whole fiber. So fibers, to lease the fiber or get a fiber is very expensive. And once you have one, you might as well use up the full theoretical bandwidth of the fiber. So with 400 gig CR, you can get 64 channels into a single fiber in just the C band, which is the equivalent of 25 terabits. If, if that's where you want to go, and if you use C and L band, it's actually more than 50 terabits. So yes, so, one can max out on the fiber, but it's really when you know your fiber uh, poor, or when you only have one fiber and you want to get a lot of bits through. Uh, most people, I think. But the point-to-point -point building application or customer connects to the internet exchange will be more than happy with a single point of view type. 